you know, every time we work on certain projects and things, there are always debates within our head. Right. Um, sometimes we think that we may not be good enough. We don't deserve what we what we have, um, and many uh, many other negative things. Jim Ripsua, I'm Jamie Rain, and welcome to Wildcats Attack, a special series in Cambodia, Lift It Up with Singha. Now, the information in today's program isn't just applicable for people who own businesses or want to be entrepreneurs, but also people who are in companies and looking for ways to lift their career to the next level. So with no further ado, I'm very, very excited to introduce our first guest of the show, co-founder of Project Inspire and specialist in financial management and investment, Jolita Su. Jalita is a co-founder of Project Inspire and a specialist in financial management and investment. Her organization, Project Inspire, founded in 2016, helps build skills and capacity for Cambodian businesses, startups, and young professionals. Jalita has her foot in both worlds, private and public, and has experience in accelerator programs, venture capital investments, and financial advisories for tech startups and corporations. Okay, so now you know a little bit about Jolita, let's get a meter in person. Thank you, Jolie, for coming today. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I mean, like, this interview isn't going to be one of them really formal business interviews because I prepared some games, some questions for the audience. But essentially today, we just want to get to know you. Mm -hmm. and, and I think your authentic story and your authentic experiences that's what we've come to see today because you have a very interesting story and Thank you. my first thing I would like to you know, start with is a question game. Oh, okay. Well, okay. I'm totally not ready for this, but uh, bring it on. Okay, so you know, this show is a Wildcats attack, all right? So we like to attack people with questions, okay? <laughs> okay. So you have like a few seconds to answer, okay? Texting or talking? Texting. Say good day, mate, in an Australian accent. Good day, mate. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> So, Jolita, I have my first question for you. Now, in the community, you are considered a business leader, especially as a, a female business leader, and, and you're in finance, and you've pushed for so many great projects, especially with Project Inspire. Now, for the people who don't know, like, where did you get your start professionally? Oh, well, uh, thank you for the question. Um, it, it was quite a challenge journey, um, and it took me quite some time uh, before I eventually settle in uh, finance and investment. Um, if there's a word for it, I would call it an exploration. Yeah. Um, so first, um, I started with uh, two degrees, uh, one in finance, the other in education. Um, that's because I love uh, both of them equally. Um, but then um, after that, um, I was glad to have started working on education or in the education field uh, early on. Um, because although I loved it very much, um, and I still do to this day, um, but, I, but I realized that that's not something that I wanted to do full time. Huh. Um, I joined many amazing international youth programs, such as SEAP or the Ship for Southeast Asian and Japanese Youth Program, um, ACWE, a common word among youth, and many other programs. Then I founded uh, Project Inspire, um, and then I went to the States and uh, study and work for a little bit uh, before I came back. A few things happened. Uh, the opportunity that I had to uh, connect and meet with uh, senior leaders in other countries, uh, with my peers in other countries, um, the opportunity to discuss uh, our country's development um, and the experience in leading people and also um, the opportunity to travel to a lot of countries uh, in Europe, in Asia, in, in Africa. And there was a turning point um, and that combination um, that's when I, I knew that I wanted to be specializing in finance and investment. And that's a turning point. Oh, it, it's the combination of things. Um, and, and at one point you realize that that's what you want. And I, I've been in finance and investment for well over six years now. Um, I'm meeting with uh, senior leaders uh, who are able to make decisions, who, who are able to, to fundamentally change how things work uh, for the country's development. Wow. I'm, I'm so happy uh, doing such work. And, um, and if I can share for your audience is that um, it's okay mm. to not know what you want to do, not right. know where you're going right now, 
but as long as you keep on um, trying different things, um, exposing yourself to you know other things, and keep on connecting with people, you'll be able to soon enough find something that clicks. My second question then is: Okay, we hear your story about people trying different you trying different paths mm -hmm. in uh, to find your passion. We say your vocational mm -hmm. working passion. Now, for people who are say in careers now and they're still deciding, how do I get to the next level? Or maybe they want to start their business or they've started a business and they're trying to figure out how do I lift it up? Mm. What advice do you have for them, audience? Great question. Um, you know, I think we live in a world where everything is just so fast changing, so dynamic and technology driven. We're not like our grandparents or parents who dedicate their whole life working on the same thing. Right. Um, Young, young people nowadays find themselves transitioning between jobs a lot more, uh, a lot more than 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Um, and, and there's a lot of pressure in being outstanding, being different, mm. unique. Um, and so, you know, I can talk about the good old stuff, like you need to be good at soft skills, like communication leadership, emotional intelligence, and hard skills, like knowing what you do. If you're in finance and investment like me, you need to know how to uh, you know, read financial reports, do financial data analysis, uh, valuations, uh, investments, stuff like that. Um, so um, I'm not going to talk about those stuff because I think you can learn through experience uh, with people. You can learn. There are a lot of resources online and you can take classes, right? But I think it comes down to, for me, it comes down to three important things. Uh, first is patience. Okay. Uh, second is focus. And the third and last one is solution. One of the biggest distractions in uh, companies is there's so much, uh, there's so many uh, notifications, so many uh, distractions that it's hard to be focused for one hour meeting, especially when you're still learning, you're a young professional, you're writing notes, but you're thinking, oh, I hope I say the right thing. You know, you're writing notes, I hope this is right. So how can you snap out of that and be present? Oh my God, I love this question a lot. Um, because um, I was navigating around this kind of issue yeah. when I was younger uh, as well. Um, I think there are two, two parts into this. Uh, the first one is your ability to uh, divide between what's important and the distractions. Right. Um, so for me, distractions can be your phone, right? right? Your phone, maybe you put it on the record or maybe not, but there's a temptation to, to look at what's, what's the update, right? right? Um, I, I usually find that keeping your phone away uh, during a meeting uh, beneficial just because right now at this moment there's nothing more important than this interaction. Right. Like, notifications can wait uh, cool. for me and there are other distractions like noises or like people around you maybe they're you know like, you need to find a, a good space for that. That's like distractions. Right. Uh, the second part is environment. Right. Environment which means like if you're a leader and you're uh, your team members are, you know, trying their best to like to be focused and concentrated. You need to, you need to be able to provide a good environment for them and making right. sure that it's okay for you to speak, no matter how stupid your questions are. I'll be able mm. to help you. It's okay to communicate with me what you want and what you think would be a challenge for you. Right. You know, um, and so you know, leaders usually have very high standards, right? Yeah. Right. They 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 expect certain things, but. Communication goes a long way. You know, right. usually I think the conflict between like what we want and what our team members are doing is because there's this gap in communication. Mm. You know, I, I learned to kind of be able to be, you know, generous with information. It's like, okay. you know, it's like sometimes, you know, of course, like <laughs> team members, they should be able to, to do things by themselves, to do research. They should know certain things. Right. but. A little guidance would be beneficial for your right. team members, right? And I learned to be able to to be a resourceful uh, uh, leader uh, right. to my teams, and that helps a lot. Right. Because right. you know, as 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 a growing up, you know, as a young person, you know, working with different kinds of supervisors, I find that supervisors are that are friendly, outgoing, mm. and resourceful and helpful. It gives a little guidance. Very, very, uh, very good to work with. The last question I have for you, John Leader, and this might be a bit personal, so if you don't want to share fully, you don't have to, right? Oh, okay, we're done. Yeah, it's just okay. Okay, you have to share fully, don't leave, please. Um, but the last question is like, okay, and I speak for myself, I'm in Gen Z, right? So 
I started the company and I have a lot of friends of my, around my age who started companies. And one thing, the hardest bit, which has hindered our ability to start a company or even progress in our career is an internal dialogue. You know, I, even for myself, I have this internal dialogue where I have doubts, which says, I'm not good enough. Uh, it's not going to work or you're going to embarrass yourself. These, these internal characters. Now, I wonder, you know, with all your, your adventures and your ambitions and careers, did you face that internal dialogue? And if, it, and if you did face that internal dialogue, what was it and how did you overcome it? Amazing question. Wonderful question. Um, of course, yes. Uh, just like other people, everyone uh, in this room, everyone who's your audience, of course, I've faced um, internal like dialogue, criticism, debates within my head, right? So every time we work on certain projects and things, there are always debates within our head. Right. Um, sometimes we think that we may not be good enough. We don't deserve what we what we have, um, and many uh, many other negative things. Um, but I, I chose to overcome that through, I think, two ways of thinking. I think because there are two two sides to the story. Right. Uh, first one is internally, and the second one is your outside environment. Right. Um, internally, um, I always keep my focus on, on why I do what I do. Hmm. Because many people can say so many different things about you to you. At the end of the day, I always come back to um, the value of, uh, that I can bring hmm. to, uh, to my work, to my career. Um, just because I can definitely see how my efforts will uh, improve or make a change to this country's development. I, right, right. Uh, in a way, you can see uh, you can see the effects of what you do, and right. that's where I get my most satisfaction from. And that's where all the other noises inside your head don't really matter. Right. Um, that's the, that's the first part. The second part part is the outside environment. Right. Um, I am I, I I don't have many many friends, but right. I'm so blessed to have a small circle of friends and, and family who I can turn to, especially when I have this internal criticism dial dialogue right. within my head. You know, uh, we have heart-to-heart -heart conversations uh, about um, about the opportunities that I, that I get mm. about uh, my work. Like, sometimes I ask questions like, do you think I deserve this? Do you right. think this is good for me? What right. do you think? Um, I'm not saying that we need to depend on other people for validation, but to have a support group it's a great way for you to like step out of your, uh, of your, your bubble. Like, yeah, yeah, your bubble, and kind of see yourself from other po like third person point of view. Right. So it sounds like one side of it is you know focusing on your purpose and your vision. Yeah. So even if you feel bad now, mm. you you can foresee manifest. Yeah. Okay, one day it'll be better. Yeah. One day I'll have I'll achieve what I'm yeah. I'm trying to go for. And the yeah. second side is to you know socialize and let people mm. know. Hey. I'm feeling, I'm not feeling good. Mm. Hey, I feel this way, I'm human, right? Mm. To, to allow yourself to feel good or bad, right? And, and trust people. So that seems like to be quite alleviating, right? Yeah. And, and thank you very much uh, you know, for your answers mm. for today. You know, I really, I really hope, you know, the audience was able to get something out of this. And, and you know, the thing is, mm. you know, we, when we researched you and we, you know, we heard about you in the community and we see, I seen you at events, mm. you know, you see the success story, Jalita Su, you know, it's done all these things. Mm. But at the end of the day, after especially this mm. conversation, we just we're just humans, right? Yeah. We're yeah. Nobody's humans. perfect. Nobody's yeah. perfect. And I and I don't strive for like being a perfect person. Right. Ever. I mean, the best thing for, for every one of us is to keep growing. Thank okay? you very much for joining the show. Definitely. And so, yeah, I look forward to more events with you in this coming year. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. Thank you for the team. You guys have been great and I'm so honored to be here uh, sitting and talking and uh, I'm so glad to be able to um, share my experience to uh, young people and I hope that's useful. If you find this interesting, get involved. We have a competition coming up and uh, here are the details.